Yuji Tadori has finally awakened. Now I gotta get this out before we begin, but I know the Yuta fans are not happy after theorizing that this was gonna happen to him for the last 100 chapters of the series, but he'll have his moment when he returns, trust. Anyway, as we can see, Yuji lands his first black flash in a while against Sukuna, which seems to be an absolutely devastating blow, and we can see that he's really locked in, his pupils displaying a strange look to them, with it stating that he's awakened due to hitting another black flash. What can his awakening actually be? Well, we'll get into that with four different guesses in this video. With that being said, I want to say thank you guys for 40,000 subscribers, I really appreciate it. And now, let's get into it. If you want to know what my first guess is going to be, I'd say this. The awakening can actually be nothing new. What do I mean by nothing new? It could be something we've already seen Yuji do, right? Which is simply operate at 120%. I know, I know. Anticlimactic, right? Well, I agree. Well, I will say that I do think that it's most reasonable because of these factors within the battle. First, Sukuna is massively weakened, and after taking a black flash from Yuji, he's going to be even more weak. I do believe that the 120% boost to Yuji's stats and performance will be enough to make Yuji significantly stronger, but not strong enough to just single-handedly destroy Sukuna in the next chapters. Just enough to match him one-on-one, -on -one, as I do think that's the direction we'll be going in for the rest of the fight. Also, after hitting a Black Flash, your chances of landing subsequent ones are increased. I can totally see Yuji and Sukuna just slugging it out with their battle being decided by who will land more Black Flashes. To be straight up though, there is only one reason to assume that Yuji's Awakening wouldn't be the normal 120 boost, and it's only because of the narration that came after Yuji hitting the Black Flash, which does imply it to be something beyond that, but then again it doesn't have to be. It'd be completely consistent for the Black Flash just to be a 120 boost, and I'd find it pretty hype. Really, anything that involves Yuji in the spotlight tends to be hype. That's what happens when you write a character that will always have their gratification delayed. There is a pretty good counter argument that I've been able to formulate for this idea though, and it's simple too. The ending of chapter 255. The language within the writing seems to be written in a way that tells the viewer to expect Sukuna to get a different boost in strength than Gojo after both of them hit their second black flashes. I don't see Gege putting in that last narration bit of Yuji's awakening if it's supposed to be the same exact boost that we'd expect him to get from hitting a black flash. Despite this counter argument, Gege could just be trolling and I do think that this is a feasible outcome. Now let's get into the two theories that I've seen most from everybody. Either a transformation akin to Sukuna's or an enlightenment thing like Gojo. So first we'll tap into the whole Sukuna, Tengen, physical transformation like thing ugly asses. Anyway, I think people will get into this theory because of the dynamic between Sukuna and Yuji and all of the foreshadowing of him getting Sukuna's abilities because of Sukuna being in his body, things of that nature. Not to mention, Yuji's arms could be something akin to him obtaining a physical evolution. Most characters in this series that have their body physically transformed in such a way are implied to be going under a transformation that increases their stats. So I guess you could say the same about Yuji. He is also Kenjaku's child. And we know that Kenjaku has had an obsession with creating this evolution of humanity that's supposedly going to manifest in the form of the merger. And I do think that Kenjaku could have a huge role in Yuji's physical transformation if he is to have one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Kenjaku wouldn't be aware of Geto's existence at the time of being in Yuji's mother's body. So he wouldn't be able to control Tengen and enact his plan anyway. So at the time of creating Yuji, he was most likely going to be Kenjaku's latest experiment before the events of the hidden inventory and everything after gave him the golden opportunity to begin the culling game. Then again, he'd been planning the culling game for hundreds of years, so I don't know. Shaky theory at best, but I figured I'd share it with you. There's also the eyes at the end of the chapter. Yuji's eyes have only ever looked like this when fighting Sukuna in chapter 214, but as we know, there was never a black flash there. If Yuji's awakening is to be correlated with these eyes of his, we could use this as evidence to display that Yuji does not necessarily need the Black Flash to have reached this point, although we can say for certain, it did accelerate his growth. Interestingly enough, after Yuji and Sukuna's fight here, he also left that cut on Sukuna's hand that he wasn't able to regenerate instantly. I will say that Yuji could be getting Sukuna's techniques after this awakening if these eyes are to clue us in on anything. To close out the Sukuna Yuji theory, I do want to say that I believe Yuji could physically transform, I just don't think it'd be a good look if he doesn't look 80% human or more. It just wouldn't be a good look because Yuji's whole shtick is his empathy and humanity and how far he's willing to go for humanity itself. I don't want him to lose that. 
I could still see Yuji's eyes being the indicator of the transformation though. I'll say that this whole Yuji transformation thing is more likely than the upcoming theory, which is the Gojo-like ascension. As for this theory, I just think it's the least likely option being honest, and I'll talk about why. First, Gojo's ascension wasn't really anything more than him picking up reverse curse technique, which seems to benefit users of the Limitless way more than it would benefit anybody else when it comes to increasing their strength as a sorcerer. I'll say this though, I can see this point somewhat applying to my own theory that I'll be going over after addressing the Gojo-like ascension. Another point is that the two fights that will be paralleled in this event don't seem to really parallel one another in the first place. I'll even say this, I believe Maki vs Sukuna is more of a parallel or mirror to Gojo vs Toji if anything, and an amazing one at that. Lastly, Yuji's always been cool and chill, I don't want him screaming at the top of his lungs on some perk 9000 type stuff. Man, I'm good off that. That's a personal gripe I'd have with that, but yeah nah, I need him to be chill. With that said, I don't have much to say about the Gojo Ascension type of thing because being honest, it's just not for me and in my opinion, wouldn't fit the story. Yuji does not need to be no Buddha. Now we move on to the final theory, the Cursed Realm. Okay, what the hell that mean 100? Well my fault, let me reintroduce you guys to this moment in the series. When Kenjaku begins the cloning game and retrieves Sasaki from within the barrier, they're in a completely black setting. She asks him, where exactly are they? Are they within a dream? And Kenjaku then says this, This is the rift between dreams and reality, the cursed realm. This is a fabric of reality that is in between the world of imagination that is your dreams in real life. With that established, I want to go over a bunch of things. Cursed energy as a whole is created by the negative emotions of humanity, and everybody has it for the most part. But for those who can't control it, their cursed energy will leak and by proxy create cursed spirits. What if the cursed realm, this rift between reality and dreams, is the storage of all cursed energy that is leaked and will be destroyed once all humans learn how to control their cursed energy or get rid of it as a whole? To get into this a bit more, the cursed realm could be the storage of all cursed energy throughout the verse. It being drawn from in order to be utilized by humans and curses alike in the real world of Jujutsu Kaisen. But with it being drawn through a fabric of reality, it cannot manifest in its true form. This is where I believe the Black Flash comes in. When one lands the Black Flash, you apply cursed energy to a strike within one millionth of a second. You distort space with that strike and then amplify your techniques. I think the distortion of strength comes from drawing the Black Cursed Energy of the Cursed Realm, and the amplification comes from that same cursed energy. To rephrase this, the rift of the cursed realm will open to give users cursed energy for one millionth of a second. And if you land that punch while the rift is open to give you cursed energy, you will essentially drag out the true black cursed energy out of this realm and use that to strike the opponent rather than the normal cursed energy that's filtered through the barrier of reality in the cursed realm that sorcerers typically get for themselves and their abilities. I also believe this because it's been stated that curses get stronger after death and those black boxes with white text we get out through the story and most recently a lot of these chapters have all been curses for the most part. These curses allowing these sorcerers to typically surpass their physical and mental limits when facing Sukuna. I think the curses becoming more powerful after the character who has spoken it died could be because when they do die, they aren't in reality anymore. So they're probably passing through the cursed realm or on the opposite end, the dreams. Obviously this lacks two key points, Mahito's usage of the Black Flash and Sukuna's Black Box. I think Sukuna's Black Box could be a chance to access the Cursed Realm, but that's about all I got. So let me know what you guys think of those two factors down below. So now that we've established all this, how does it relate to Yuji? As we know, Yuji has always had a certain affinity toward the Black Flash, as it's even been stated that he's been blessed by the Sparks of Black and it's almost as if he could use it at will. Yuji's natural path of growth is to be able to draw out this technique at will at some point, and I even believe that he's been well on this path for a while. When it comes to curses, Yuji's curse on Higuruma was drawn out from him as he fought Sukuna, but Yuji's still alive, and I don't think we've seen any other character speak a curse and have it control another character like Yuji's did over Higuruma. You could say that Yuji's without a doubt the closest to the cursed realm if the curses and the black flash come from the cursed realm itself. I think Yuji's awakening could be gearing toward a path where he can access this realm at will and utilize true and raw cursed energy. 
he already has phenomenal curse energy control, being able to use the Divergent Fist at will. But yeah, Black Flash at will could be this awakening. And if Gege is going to go full crazy with this, full direct access to the energy of this curse realm. Obviously, the problem with this theory is that it just makes Yuji way too broken, especially for the current moment of the story. So yeah, I don't know. With that being said, guys, if you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching all the way through. Um, I really appreciate the support. It's been insane recently. With that being said, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.